Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, where you come for education, analysis, and opportunities in blockchain and crypto. My name is Lucas. And I'm Ryan. And we have a follow-up, another in our series of videos about the DAO, the, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, Reserve Currency, DeFi 2.0, 3.0, something point oh movement, this new evolution of stable coins that goes beyond one blockchain. Of course, one of the many blockchains that is at the root and foundation of it, there are many roots to a tree. One of the big tap roots would be the Avalanche Network. And we have done a video on the Avalanche. If you want to know about the Avalanche ecosystem in general, we do go through whole ecosystem videos. So if you like those walkthroughs and how-tos, we go over market outlooks, technical vids, all that good stuff. Check it out. Uh, this is not financial advice. What is this, Ryan? It's infotainment, I suppose, right? <laughs> infotainment. But yeah. It's, it's educational information. It's entertainment. This is a new technology. I mean, we're, we're fumbling our way through this. We're, we're trying to learn it and support those projects that we feel and believe are going to be innovative and part of the building blocks of the future. We look for macro value, macro potential, a very macro look at this market in general. And uh, we like to talk about the economics and in relation to traditional yep. finance and markets. So we also like to experiment and take this time to, to teach others how to, how to get involved because we learn from each other. If you have a comment, yeah. drop it. Let us know what's going on, a project to look at. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and show us some love and support with one of those links below. But yeah, uh, without further ado, in our Dow stablecoin and our uh, continuation, we've talked about Hector Dow, one Dow decoupling, untethering from the dollar, and of course we've got that video on Abracadabra that talks we about just did. yep yeah it talks about Mim and that cross chain stablecoin. Now um, one of the main protocols, early main protocols that spearheading this whole movement is built on uh, this network that we're very bullish on, Avalanche. Yes, right. So Avalanche is the is the blockchain that's, well, first of all, Avalanche on its own has been a great, great investment asset over the last few months, weeks. Even today, uh, it still continues to outshine some of its competitors. And well, one of the reasons why is there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of great development. You can go to our YouTube, uh, video we did on Avalanche and see some of the ecosystems that are emerging on on that chain. Look at this some growth. Of the cool th cool the things they're year. doing. Oh man, Th those are crazy numbers, you know. And and one of the and if you ask yourself, well, well what's what's driving all this all this interest in Avalanche? Why why is it up so much? Why sixteen percent just today? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. Um, but one of them, mm -hmm. no doubt, is Wonderland Time, the new reserve currency DAO project on. Avalanche. So what is Wonderland time? Well, in order to really, well, first of all, let's, let's take a look at the token and see what's price and its, and its position before we start unpacking what it is. Uh, it's right and around trading. And, go ahead. I was going to say, to your point, obviously, when you look at Avalanche, and I forgot to pronounce his last name, E-R-I-N, Aaron's first name, the founder of Avalanche is someone who's been in blockchain before crypto before uh, Bitcoin was made and is very familiar with cryptography and, and understood a lot of the limitations with security and scalability. So mm. this whole uh, contract chain, platform chain, C chain, X chain, uh, P chain, Avalanche is, is built in a very beautiful way. They have already given airdrops and experimenting on their platform is a lot of fun like many others there, a lot of their growth, when we look at this this last year, oh, there's a Wonderland now, but when we look at mm -hmm. this year, a lot of it's due to Ethereum gas fees. People are going to be hearing this over and over again. Yes. Ethereum gas fees, the the, the cost to do transactions and, and, and to engage, sign smart contracts is so expensive. It's not fun. It's not feasible. And Avalanche, like, like Phantom or Harmony One, or many of these polygon bounty smart chains, Cosmos, Cosmos, 
they are taking a lot of that energy for people who are wanting to continue building DeFi and building on crypto and blockchain, but don't want to wait for Ethereum to catch up to opening, right. opening more space. So now that being said, you're absolutely right. Uh, we've talked about this new DeFi movement and Wonderland is one of the o o OGs, the original OGs, yeah. forks of Olympus DAO, the original fork right. of Olympus DAO. And it was built on Avalanche. And of course, Olympus DAO was built on Ethereum. So, right. so obviously you're saving money right there on the gas fees when you're interacting with the contract. And that's that's a big part of why Wonderland is on Avalanche and not on Ethereum for example one more thing so before we talk about wonderland uh, i'd like to just mention that it's a fork of ohm or olympus dow and the the one of the big things that I, that um uh, that time wonderland has over that other project aside from the gas fees which we're going to bring up uh, every now and we'll bring that up frequently but other than that advantage the other advantage or, or plus that uh, wonderland has over olympus dow is that we know who created wonderland it's a man and by the man by the name of danny uh danny Gus, uh what is his last name stagali or he's an italian figure well sestagali that's his last name daniel danny sestagali and so we know who this guy is he's got he's got a reputation he he's a public figure he's all over twitter he he was associated with a, a previous blockchain uh project known as Oh, what, um, man, you know, when you want to say something and it leaves your mind, well, that just happened to me, but he's got a history of, and blockchain. This is not his first project. He's a, he's also a, uh, the founder of Abracadabra and Popsicle. So we know who Danny is. Um, whereas with Olympus DAO or very, and these other DAOs, these other reserve currency DAOs that are coming up, whether it's, um, Snowbank or various others, um, they're, they're anonymous, right? So there's something to be said about a project that people are, are, are believing enough to put, put their name on. And um, I believe that, that is a, a, big, a big selling point or, or strength of a wonderland that is kind of, uh, its peers don't really seem to have matched yet. And to that point, he is, not only is he a public figure and he's transparent, he's out there, he's also someone who's been rug pulled, is aware of front running and a lot of problems in the space. And his intention of creating these protocols was specifically to build more solvency and transparency and to change the game theory that, uh, that benefited the, you know, the many, the, the people who are building the building blocks of DeFi over you know, uh, whales or others that can come in and take advantage of limited right. liquidity. And so, but yeah, so Wonderland, is this not the his premium creation? Is this is not one of the foundation, yes. uh, the the large pieces to this new DeFi puzzle, and it's expected to be um, continuing to have innovation a part of it for some time here in the future. Yeah, it is for sure. It is the um, it's the reserve currency protocol that's that's supposed to be that's a it's a well. Let me say that again. It's a reserve currency protocol that's supposed to be tied in with that's eventually going to be tied in with abracadabra what already is abracadabra and popsicle to, to create this whole DeFi 2.0 ecosystem mm -hmm. and so it's very much a um, it's an integral part of of the new DeFi world mm -hmm. that's being that's being created right now and it's to your what you were saying is it's it's about tweaking the incentives and the rules and the and the and the protocol such that we can get past these kind of like lose-lose outcomes or win-lose outcomes where VCs or whales can come into a protocol and bring a bunch of liquidity and drive prices up and take a huge position and then cash out mm -hmm. and then you know tank prices and walk away with with the bags and leaving you know people who came late to that protocol kind of you know holding the bag right losing losing money and so this is about a, a different set of rules a different set of incentives and uh, I guess we can get into the game theory a little bit before if we want to touch on that. Mm -hmm. um if you go so you you see those you see the parentheses and the, and the hats the and you'll see this other the other protocols other than the wonderland they'll use frogs or they'll use cups or they'll use uh three three or four four or nine nine uh in, in parentheses and and so what's what is this referencing what are we what are we talking about here <clears throat> and what it's about is 
Well, if you go a little lower, you'll, you'll get to the section where it shows the game theory squares. But essentially what's going on here is maybe it's under, maybe it's under FAC. I think it might be under FAC. Is it under FAC? Yeah, I think so. Got it. There we go. There you go. Okay. Now we can see. So what's going on here? So this is a game theory chart or grid chart, not a chart, grid. <laughs> and you can see the, the, the X axis and the Y axis, there's essentially two players that are being, that have strategy, they have different strategies or two different or actions that they can choose. You, they can stake, they can bond, or they can sell. And, you know, you can, you can have two different, you can have different combinations of this. So one, one can stake, one can bond, or one can stake, one can sell, both could sell, both could bond, you know, so there's various combinations of actions you could, you could engage in here. And if, when you move to the right bottom quadrant, the, the XX, uh, quadrants you're, or, or boxes, you're going to see those are lose lose kinds of uh, outcomes. And in, and uh, then as you move back to the other side with this, where you have the green boxes, you're, you're getting you're getting towards the win win outcomes. And so the question is is how do we design the rules of the protocol such that we encourage people to choose the actions or the the outcomes that that reward the protocol and the users both, so we can get win win, you know, kind of outcomes where. Uh, and, and that can be done through different, there's various ways. Some protocols do it through bonding mechanisms, like certain bonding periods where you, you, know, you can't unstake and you have to wait for so many days. And others um, have no, no, no attempt to, to, to kind of like deal with these problems, right? So what's going on here is this is a novel approach through, a, a tr uh, through a various options to basically encourage people to be in the protocol longer. And so they're trying to like get in and stake and then unstake and sell uh, and move to the next protocol. So you can, you know, kind of do it again and stay ahead of the game. This is about people seeing, oh, no, it makes more sense for me to just to stay locked in and enjoy these rebasing periods and compound my interest. Because doing that is actually a better profit or better yield than it would be if I tried to unstake and, and game it. Right. So this is about creating incentives for people not to try to game game the protocol that's really what we're talking about here a lot creating enough incentives to people so people want to stay locked in and so and far so good it's worked for for some time now it's still very early on but one of the beautiful things about it you know you could refer back to our now you you brought up this is the legacy wonderland website not to be confused with legacy institutions and uh, this is most likely what most people will find the, too, yeah. the current one. But but Wonderland being the original fork, this is something that is has is being built upon. It's 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 dynamic. There are it has added value. You notice that there's time and mem LP, or there's just a mem bond. So what that means is time itself. Is is reinforcing and is being is reinforced by other protocols on different chains, and that's one of the things that's so remarkable and beautiful about this. And as we mentioned in our our Abracadabra video, MIM is an asset backed reserve currency, not a debt backed you know uh, reserve currency. So MIM is 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 created by LPs. MIM is created by by digital assets that are growing in value and time is 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 built in part backed by mem by by mem um by avax and and other um asset growing you know interest bearing assets interest bearing yeah. assets so one thing this, i'd like to point out is that tvl number that 1.8 billion that's and just to give you an idea of this protocol that that's up 100 100 million 100 million from yesterday um, which that's is pretty you, impressive. The, and and what is what and what happens from that? The backing per time goes up. I mean, the last time I looked at the backing, it was under, it was below sixteen. It was like in the 15s, 1500 and something. So as the TVL goes up and as the backing goes up, it it, it course it it's, it moves with the treasury balance. That's that's kind of what's happening here. So the treasury balance is the it holds those those assets that are used to mint time so the the time avax lp or the mem or the or the wrapped avax those are the assets that go into the treasury and as those assets accrue value the treasury balance accrues value and then that raises the backing per time and that'll start creeping up and as that goes up 
the runway gets longer. And if you're wondering what runway means, that's the amount of days given the treasury balance that the APY can be, those APY um, promises can be, can be made, uh, made good over the, So it's essentially given that balance, given the, the assets in reserve, there's 413 days of, of, um, of that, of that APY, 94,000 APY that they can make good on. Well, this is exciting. Wonderland is the premier, the, it, it is the premier DeFi 2.0 fork of Olympus Dow, the, the OG. And Avalanche Network, as we just showed, is, is one of the premier smart contract platforms. Now, of course, the market, they're all still, they're, none of them are decoupled completely. And if, if we go into a bear market tomorrow or next week, there's a lot of leverage in a lot of these. In, in, a, in a lot of these, and if avalanche goes down, the LPs go down. We could we could definitely see some unwinding take place here as we do anywhere. There's nothing sure. that's all you know foolproof, and it's but it should be around. mentioned that you you can take your wrapped memo, which let's make let's maybe explain what that is. So. When you buy time or when you bond your, you your uh, interest bearing assets, you stake your time, you're going to get memo. And what that is, is a one to one um, placeholder. Let's show it. I guess you could, it's like a stable coin, I guess you could say. It's, yeah, it's a stable coin for time. So you, if you have 1.191 memo, that's exactly how many time you have. And when you unstake your memo, you're going to have time back in your wallet. So it's, it's really just a placeholder. The, 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 but one cool thing you can do with your memo. Uh, you can take that and you can go and take it, park, pull it over onto Abracadabra and use it as collateral for a, for, for your, to, um, to, to borrow MIM. And then you could take your MIM, now, can which you is a stable on, coin. What, what, can you do that on the Avalanche network? No, I believe you're going to have to bridge over to Phantom. Is that correct? Or, or, or no, you have to bridge over to Ethereum, right? Uh, In order to I'm, do that. I'm not sure which network. I do know that you can do the same thing. Um, you can do the same thing on Spooky Swap, or there are other places. The, right. the idea is that wrapped memo. There are protocols that you can stake your wrapped. You can borrow against your wrapped mm -hmm. memo. The the right. problem is with that. I mean, there's always is no, that, the liquidation uh, problem. Yeah. Yeah. For me, the risk is look. The moment you take your right now, what we're talking about here is because memo is a certificate it's just a certificate for the time that you don't have any mm -hmm. of when you when you stake it mm -hmm. i could go take this certificate that that's worth that grows in value i could go deposit it in a DeFi protocol and borrow against it mm -hmm. but if the value of time goes down now you get liquidated i get liquidated i can't right. go back and get my position and and ride it out and so it's just a risk. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's not, it's one of those things that I, I really stray away from the gambling high yeah. risk plays of, well, as long as the market goes up and continues to do great, this will work. This will work. I mean, that's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's true, but we're, again, we look for these really innovative, the macro, the long-term pictures, wonderland, Knowing the founder, it's been around for a little while now. It continues to grow. You talk about uh, not just the uh, total volume locked has grown up 100 million, but the amount of users, hundreds of 100,000 plus. I mean, it continues. The adoption rate continues to grow as more people learn more about what it is and how it works. And really, I think for DeFi, the Wonderland and this for obviously Olympus Dow, the uh, anonymous creation on Ethereum is the original, but Wonderland is really what took that concept and, and gave it legs and has, has moved it around. And it, this yeah. is the most exciting thing in DeFi since AMMs and DEXs. Oh yeah, you know, I would agree. I would say since nfts i guess if you want to count nfts in that world but i'm mm -hmm. putting them separate and they're still rocking uh but yeah this is this is absolutely uh an exciting time to be in crypto an exciting time to be involved in DeFi, and it's rewarding to partake in these platforms and communities in so many ways that you can't get from purchasing etfs or sitting on the sidelines 
And that, that's what's fun, you know, uh, yeah. learn the language. You know? And I do, I've, I've read that they are planning on rolling out um, more, more, op, more, more op options and um, more layers to Wonderland as time goes on. There's going to be a metaverse and an NFT um, layer to this as well. So they, they do have big plans. This is, this is not the final form. And I, I feel like, I feel like Wonderland is going to become pretty popular in the DeFi space. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's my hunch. We'll see. I agree. And uh, before we go, how do you achieve these APYs? Well, we're going to leave links to everything below as always. Of course, as we mentioned, this rebase, when you, when you acquire time, however you do, whether it's through bonding or going out in the market purchasing and at the moment, it seems like based upon the rates of these discounts, um, the the best bet would just be to go out and purchase it and stake it yeah. immediately from um, from a decent like Trader Joe or one of those mm -hmm. decentralized pangolin. pangolin. But every every few hours, every eight hours, every eight hours, every several every eight hours, there's a rebase, which means based upon whatever balance you have, you will get that reward yield go directly to that balance and another eight hours. So it, it's that compounding interest that's automatically done for you. You don't have to do anything. That's how you get this 9.8, almost 10% return in just five days. And then of course you right. get another rebase and another week of, of compounding on top of that. That's how these are achieved. They, in order for them to be achieved, you have to leave it locked up. You have to let it grow yes. over time. You getting it out and come back in, you're you're missing out on a lot of the opportunities. And that's the game right. period of incentivizing people to to stay longer. It's it's a, a beautiful project. It's still very early on. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget how to show us some love and support. We will continue to show the developments on this and other innovative blockchain cryptocurrency developments. If you know of some, drop it in the comments and leave it below. If you like this, you know what to do, hit the thumbs up and all that good stuff. Do we cover Wonderland app pretty much for the most part yeah. for those who are looking to get involved? Yeah, I think so. Okay, do your guess... own research. Read that white paper four or five, six times. Get on YouTube. You know, Do your research. Don't get into anything you don't understand. But take, take a look at Wonderland. I guess we, we did it. We did an ecosystem overview. If you want to know how to get in to it directly, check out our, our ecosystem on Avalanche. Yes. But to save you a little bit of time, like, like Ryan mentioned, you can go to Pangolin or Trader Joe. These are some of the more popular exchanges yep. and you just go to trade and with your MetaMask web 3.0 wallet, you can yep. swap your Avalanche or whatever uh, avalanche token you have directly for time time That's now it. here's heads up one thing i will tell you if you're on pangolin and you try to swap for time you won't find time in the pull down menu what you're going to have to do is go to uh time you have to go to nomics or coin gecko or some website that has a time page and copy. Co copy the contract address and paste the contract address and then pangolin will pull time up but it won't, unlike Trader Joe, which here it does is not. Yeah, there's a contract address. Just click on it right there. Just paste that in, in Pangolin and you will find time. You will not find it in the drop down menu. Right. Um, of course, the uh, Avalanche Bridge, where is that located at for those who don't um, know? AVAX. I think it's just AVAX. Here, let me find it. It's I think AVAX it's just AVAX. Bridge. Yeah, it's bridge.avax.network. And why don't we just leave that up there too? Because uh, many people are more familiar with, with Ethereum mm -hmm. than they are with Avalanche. So, if And I'll tell you another way to get into Avalanche. If, if, you don't have a th if you don't want to use a bridge, you don't have ETH, or you have, say you have Dash or Litecoin or, or Bitcoin and you want to know how to get in, go to stealthx.io. And you can bridge or you can swap, not, well, not swap. You, it, I'm not sure what you call this. <laughs> it's a, it's this a stealth not, exchange. This is not it's, a decentralized exchange. Mm -hmm. This no. is run through uh, uh, some organization or company that's been around for yes. quite some time. And it's, it's in many ways it's vetted. So of course, do your yeah, own I've research. Had, 
I've, yeah, do your own research and uh, be careful, know what you're doing. But I've, you know, I've made a mistake on this, on this website and, and I've contacted customer support and they've, they've stood behind the, uh, stood behind their product and they've made, made me whole. So it's, you uh, can't it's, always very, do. it's worth, yeah, you don't always get that. So it's worth, you know, it's worth, uh, every now and then worth using it. If, if, you know, they don't need to, you don't give them any information. It's completely anonymous. Um, so in that sense, you know, your privacy cool. is our goal. No registration is needed. Limitless custody free. What's beautiful about this is they have quite, um, access to a lot of different cryptos. So it like, mm-hmm. like Ryan was saying, if you have vert, many of the most popular cryptos out, not just Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin, and you can, you can go directly in to Avalanche. Now, let me tell you one more thing. You t- when you make these swaps, they're going to ask you to paste your Avalanche address. And, and, and that's to tell the, the protocol where to send your AVAX tokens. Mm-hmm. Do not give your MetaMask Web3 AVAX address. You have to go to the AVAX wet wallet itself and you have to paste the X chain address. And once you get, once you send it to the X chain, then you can send it to the P chain or, or the C chain or whatever and do whatever you need to do. But just be careful. This is an X chain address um, protocol. And what so, we, what we should do and what we will do, what we should do and will do, our, our avalanche uh, ecosystem goes into a lot of the projects uh, for assuming people have a little bit of DeFi knowledge 1.0, but we mm-hmm. will, we're doing a web 3.0 wallet. We'll also do an avalanche wallet tour yeah, because the reality sure. is that the avalanche wallet is a little bit more nuanced than most cryptocurrencies. And um, yeah. I'm not going to access it right now at the moment, um, but the point- well, That'll be another video. We'll do it soon. And and yep. that goes to what you were saying is you have to be very careful. They have three different chains, an X chain, a C chain, and a P chain. And if you're sending Avalanche off of an exchange or you're using um, a service like StealthX.io, yes. you just have to be very sure of which chain that they're sending. It won't be the mm-hmm. P, it'll be either X or C, but right. MetaMask is a C chain dealing with contracts yep. and X chain deals with exchanges, but it's yes. not meant to be with uh, smart contracts. So right. that's the main thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a great protocol to learn how to get involved. That's part of the security and the scalability that allows the transactions to be so cheap. While people are engaging in DeFi with avalanche like trader joe or or wonderland there's a whole nother chain of avalanche that's locked up and earning close to 10 percent staking rewards maybe a little over i forgot what the exact number is but there's an inflation rate to avalanche and and they're staking and keeping the system secure and robust so it's beautiful to be a part of crypto we're absolutely in the beginning as you see wonderland let us know what you think. Do you think Wonderland and Danielle, it, what they're, what's being created and what the community is doing is going to be around for some time? Or do you think this is a fad that will be over before the year at the moment? Let us know. Yeah, let us know what you think. We we are bullish at the moment and see this as kind of a, a breath of fresh air to blockchain and Very crypto much. and DeFi. Uh, but recognize that just as we see these quick dumps happen in crypto with with a lot of leveraged longs needing to be liquidated, anything where you see over leverage uh, in a market this volatile can can go down very quickly in a short amount of time. Well, that, I guess yes. that is very quickly, right? Can go. That's down. a good way to. That's a can good. Go way down to very quickly, it. very quickly, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, but look, avalanche, eighteen percent. That's it's really it's I guess it's like an avalanche, man. Snowball it just continues to grow. And a lot of it, like you said, it's dealing with Wonderland and being at the cutting edge. Avalanche is not just at the cutting edge of providing smart contract relief for the, the Ethereum platform, but it's at the cutting edge of DeFi, of DeFi in general, in general, yeah. thanks to Wonderland and a lot of these other protocols. So thank you to all those developers. Thank you to all those stakers and uh, DeFi market makers, all the people out there, it's, it's you and me, it's all of us experimenting. If you would like to see time grow, if you would like to see Avalanche grow, 
take it's it's wise to take a small portion say i don't mind if this goes down 80 90 percent through some kind of crazy bear market cycle i want to watch this for the next two three four five years stake it till you make it it's really built on on us allowing it's a decentralized community it is a DAO. yep right and and that's how it allows more people if we would like to see built millions become billions for more to come in into crypto and to open the gates then it's going to be not waiting from some top-down centralized source to provide the liquidity it's going to be from those community members that continue to take a portion and put it out there uh, right. to allow others so there's there's a little tidbit on the way out do you think we covered wonderland pretty good yeah i think we got it i think we got it all right well then until the next time have a beautiful day namaste thank you